Okay, so today's presentation is on postgraduate student involvement as co-developers of a sustainable open educational resource. And this is uh, presented by Geesje van der Berg uh, and Lebo Moudau. Uh, Geesje van der Berg is a professor in the uh, Department of Curriculum and Instructional Studies at, the, at, at UNISA um, and a Commonwealth uh, of Learning Chair in ODL of Teaching Education. The research focuses on students' use of technology in ODL, the student interaction in ODL, academic capacity building and openness in education. She's published widely as a sole author and co-author with colleagues and students in curriculum studies and open distance learning. That's this ODL. Uh, Geesje van der Berg is leading a collaborative project between the Karl von from Osietzky University of Oldenburg University in Germany and UNISA involving academic capacity building for UNISA academics in, in this uh, open distance learning. Currently, she is a program manager of the Structured Masters in Education, and she teaches two modules in the program. Um, and, and numerous masters and doctoral students have completed their studies under her supervision. We also have as a presenter, Lebo Modau, uh, who's an associate professor in the Department of Curriculum and Instructional Studies at uh, UNISA as well. So her research focuses on students' assessments in ODL, technology enhancing learning, uh, enhanced learning, student interaction in ODL and openness in education. She's uh, a member of the collaborative project between the Karl von Osieski University of Oldenburg University uh, in Germany and UNISA, uh, and involved in academic capacity building for UNISA academics in ODL as well. Currently, she is the module coordinator of the Structured Masters in Education and teaches two modules in the program. She's also supervised masters and two doctoral students who've completed their studies under her supervision. Um, I'll now stop my share and then we can actually have um, the presentation. So the floor is yours. Hope the screen sharing works. Good morning, everybody. I'm going to share the screen. Is it visible? Yep, that yes, looks it is. good. Oh, but it's Thank not in you. the presentation mode yet. Yep, Better? now it is. Yep, no, this okay. looks wonderful. Thank you. Um, thank you, um, Menu, for the kind introduction. Much appreciated. And also thank you for the invitation. It's really an honor um, to be here and to do this presentation. And I hope it will be also more of a discussion than a presentation. Um, yeah, as you have said, um, I work in the Department of Curriculum and Instructional Studies um, with Lebo, who is co-presenting. And we are excited to share with you guys all um, the uh, journey that we had to co-develop um, uh, an OER with our students, our postgraduate students. So we'll, um, in, our intro, in our presentation, we'll start with a brief introduction and background, um, just to contextualize the presentation. And then Lebo will talk about the OER development process, what we did and um, the empirical research that followed this development process, and we'll share the findings, implications, and conclude with a few remarks with regard to this OER development process. So um, by way of introduction, I'd like to share with you just briefly our context because it relates to the development process. Um, as I think you briefly mentioned already also Menu, um, we teach both teach in the Masters of Education in Open Distance E-Learning. And this is a structured Masters program um, consisting of four modules and then a mini dissertation that students complete. So against this background, there was um, then the call from Saudi Law Escalator and the then UNESCO Chair on Open Distance on multi-model learning and OER at Northwest University at the time. And we responded to this call and the call was then about participation in the Digital Humanities OER Champion Initiative. 
And the purpose of the in, um, this initiative is then to build research and um, on the creation and the use of OERs in the digital uh, humanities. So the program um, consisted of a short course, um, an online short course on OERs, which we attended. It consisted of a few webinars and discussions on OER. So we also are um, grateful for that kind of training and um, um, the webinars we were able to um, attend. And um, on this note, we also would like to acknowledge the support from um, Saudi Lar Escalator and the UNESCO chair, and specifically Saudi Lar for um, financial support to make this um, project also visible uh, possible. So um, in our proposal for this um, program or initiative, we addressed a specific problem. And the problem we had was a real problem in our um, modules that we teach that we, were, we, are also, we have also always been using um, open source material, open um, OERs and open um, articles in, in open um, access journals. But we didn't have one specific um, uh, the source that we could use to refer our students to that had all the information broadly on um, what ODL is, what it consists of, and the broad topics to cover those. So we were looking for a um, contextualized source that we could use and we could um, refer students to in, in future. So um, then the purpose of the OER was going to be um, to, have, to be this source that we could uh, refer students to, and also, of course, to publish it on um, our UNISA um, open, uh, the ODL, oh, sorry, the open um, source, uh, uh, open sources, and also on um, Marlot and um, OER Africa. So this is the purpose of, of using this OER in future. And then based on the course that we, we attended and also our own thinking and discussions, we decided to involve our um, Emmet and ODL students in this co-development process. Um, just a little bit about the context of these Emmet and ODL students. Most of them are lecturers in higher education in different institutions in South Africa and Africa. And we have got a few teachers as well. So based on their context as well and the knowledge and skills that we thought they were going to be able to bring to the context and the development process, um, we decided to go this route. Um, very rewarding at the end. And then um, with regard to selection, we have got small groups of these Emmet and ODL students. So last year, for example, we had 15 students in um, our modules on average. And we decided to, between Lebo and myself, to select the seven that um, had the highest mark, the best performing students, and also um, those who were teaching in higher education to um, go with us on this journey. Um, we did the necessary permission, asking them for permission and also get their consent. We also applied for ethical clearance at UNISA, which we got to use their materials and also then, um, of course, to um, involve them in this journey and the research thereof. So Lebo will talk then now next um, about the development process. So over to you, Lebo. Thank you. Thank you, Hyeshe, and good morning, everyone. Uh, and thank you for attending our presentation. Uh, I will be sharing with you the development process that we undertook while we started with this whole project. So as Kesha has indicated that we, we, we selected students between the two of us and those students were uh, the best performing students in, 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 in the four modules that, that we are teaching both of us. So we took it upon ourselves that we are going to collaborate with them uh, uh, to create an OER. So uh, we used their lecture notes 
our lecture notes, sorry, and also the student assignments. So basically, we, we actually were, uh, looked at what they were doing in, 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 in the in the modules in terms of the different assignments, although we had also discussion forums as well, but the focus was only on the students' assignments that uh, actually all those uh, student assignments. So we chose the best uh, uh, performing ones. So what we did is that uh, between the two of us, we decided on the themes, that is the topics that we are going to, to share with the, with, the, with the students. So uh, the, uh, the topics that will also be involved in the, in the, in, in the uh, creating of that OER. So mainly it was general topics that were, were cutting across all the four modules. So the first theme was all about definitions and the history of ODL, uh, teaching, uh, the second one, teaching and learning theories and practices of uh, in ODL. And the third one was about uh, management in ODL. And the fourth which is technology in ODL. So with these four themes as the main topics for the OER, we invite, we actually invited students via email and we just gave them the information in the email about these themes and also the sub themes. So the students were given enough time to, to decide or to select which um, topics will and themes or themes, themes and uh, sub themes where they will be involved in. At the end of the day, they all chose uh, their interested topics and they decided to uh, send us an email that they are interested and we continued with them. So what we did is after the invitation, uh, after they have chosen the, the, the themes and the sub themes, or let me rather say the sub themes because we had different sub themes and they had to, had, some had to do more than one of those um, sub themes or uh, subtopics, if I can say that. So we, we, we had an information session. We decided to arrange a, an information session on Microsoft Teams, looking at the fact that they are all over the place and some of them are working not, not closer to us. Then we had a, our meeting. The meeting was conducted uh, to discuss the, the, the whole project, the whole plan with them and to get their input as well on how can we go about it and to also uh, make them aware as to the process and as to how the process will be unfolded. So student, uh, students then, I would say, then they became our, uh, authors. We, 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 we actually, uh, I would say, initiated them or, or made them aware that now that you are going to be authors, you need to take part in this OER. So we, they had uh, four weeks to draft their respective units, as I indicated that they made it, they selected the, the units that they feel comfortable with. And we also create, for the ease of communication, we created um, a WhatsApp group so that they can feel comfortable communicating with us. We had, we had an open communication so that we can be able to, to actually engage more with them if there are any challenges. So they, they then uh, started with, with their drafts and that is when the stage, the stage came in. These students, um, as lecturers, we started by drafting our our units, that is Kheshe drafted her unit. I also drafted my unit that served as examples so that we can provide these examples to the students so that they can be able to also uh, have an idea or have a structure of how to go about this uh, uh, OER. So having sent them the, the structure, they then developed or drafted their own OERs. And in the process, we had an opportunity to also uh, have an open op communication with them. They can either contact both of us or uh, Hiesha or myself, or maybe they can talk amongst themselves before they can actually uh, hand in or submit their final draft. So that on its own gave them an opportunity to be able to work with each other, work with us, and just to get Larry to also know that they are uh, they're in the right track. So the drafting part took around a uh, a few weeks where they they also wanted to find themselves find the literature and be able to know that we are in the in the right track by also uh, checking up with everyone else the literature and everything although they were working on their assignment they were working based on what they did in the module in the modules or what they actually learned from the content but they also needed to have enough time to look at the 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 the, the, the literature as well so uh then they had their final drafts. And after having their final drafts, we then had to get to a stage where 
peer, peer review was then uh, conducted. As I indicated earlier that uh, they had to like work with each other as peers and share each, um, share each other's, uh, I mean, share each other's units and be able to, 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 to give each other feedback. But what the most interesting part was that we, we actually had all those, the drafted OER, all the units in, in, in one document and we sent to all of them, including us. They all had a chance to check the whole document, basically uh, giving, I mean, giving feedback to each and every unit, any other, like all of us, we were able to actually look into the whole document, give our inputs, give, and uh, we also basically we're giving them an opportunity to also be uh, at, at the level of being able to review and be able to give uh, the necessary uh, information. So that's a uh, peer review amongst themselves. And also uh, that's when we realized that then we need, to, we, we, are, we are ready now, we can take this to an external review. And that also, uh, was sent to the document was sent to the an ODL expert who actually uh, did uh, the review for us and along the way we were able to revise it and all these rounds that of the peer review every time came with constructive feedback that helps us to actually uh, improve the, the 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 OER so in the whole process what i what actually came out is that students were able to to or between uh, us and the students we were able to actually uh, revise the whole process and uh, be satisfied all of us that this is what we want to see uh, uh, as an end product then after the external review that's when we as lecturers sat down myself and Khiyashe, we had our final review and then we looked at the oer uh, uh, document to just to check that everything is in place, that we, we quality assured it, and we made sure that all the top, uh, all the topics are, are there in the in the units, and that all the activities are in place. Just just to make sure that everything is is how we expected it, especially looking at our structure, the structure that we designed as what is it what we want to see in each and every unit, and also to make sure that all the units are according to the same uh, standard. So that is the final uh, review. We then finalized the review and we were happy about it, all of, all of us, the students and us, then we moved to the language, language editing part. It was sent to the UNISA language editing, it was edited. And after the language editing, we had to now move to where we, I would say we're actually fortunate that one of the, the authors or one of the students was also, a, I mean, is also a professional instructional designer. So fortunately the student came, came on board and brought her expertise as an instructional designer. And she created uh, the document as a flip book. And also it has more like an open soft, there was a, a, more like an open software where it can be more, uh, used as a or yeah used as a flip book so that is the, in, the the most interesting part you will see it in the next slide then after everything has been done right up to the instructional design where we now everything was ready it was due for submission there are different uh, platforms and repositories that that we uh, we can submit the the OER but then we had to uh, uh, submitted to UNISA OER uh, ses uh, session where they, I mean, to the OER uh, a, a platform or repository where they can be able to uh, submit it on the UNISA open. And that is when uh, we it was already in place and in, in good order. Then we are hoping that in future or yeah, in future, we will also submit it to other repositories like uh, OER Africa, the Melo and the others that are there. So that is where, uh, where we are at this stage in terms of the OER that we have developed. Then that is the completion part of it. Um, Kesha will share maybe the next slide that talks to the OER itself that is in, flip, in a flip book. Can, she can also share it with us and maybe by flipping it, opening it Thank for you. us. Thank you, Lebo. Yes, I'm going to show you the final product. As Lebo said, it's on Flipbook and it's also available on as, as a PDF document and, and words. This is a requirement from UNISA. 
and you will see that it is in the template of the UNISA um, open, uh, what UNISA open repository. So it's going to open. There you go. Is it visible, Nebu? Yes, it is. Thank you. So this, the, sorry, it's not showing what I don't want to show. It's, um, just going to briefly, I don't want to bore you with the, the content or the um, detail, but yeah, this is then the final product of our OER. It's about theory and practice in open distance learning. And they are all the contributors that the two of us on top and with our six students at the end who worked with us. Um, so there's a little bit about the syllabus. Maybe I can just go back. Um, we did um, the definitions, openness in ODL, teaching and learning theories we covered, online presence in ODL. These are all topics that we covered in our modules and then managing teaching, learning and assessment in ODEO, um, managing student support in ODEL, um, strategic planning in ODEL, and lastly, technology in ODEL. So these are the eight units that we covered between us. So it's, it's eight authors and each one of us was responsible for one of the units. So this is just a sneak peek on to see how it was, uh, was done at the end. There are activities as well. So I, I assume it can be used as a MOOC as well. This is um, the way that the UNISA OERs are developed in general. So there's a little bit of the first unit, second unit, openness in ODR, um, same kind of order. We also had a, have a few um, videos that are interactive and live links, not on Flipbook. There they are, um, unfortunately, not on Flipbook, but um, in the PDF and the Word document, they are live and then it takes students to the OER. So yeah, there it is a little bit of the theories that we are covering, online presence there. So yeah, I think that's enough. Going to close this document. Go back to oh, you know, now I'm not sharing what I'm supposed to share. Just go back. There you go. So um, then, when this OER was developed, we decided to do research on um, how students have um, experienced the whole process, and we were interested to know what they have learned, not necessarily what we have gained or the university has gained, but what their learning was and what they have gained from the process. So you can see we used the model of uh, Smith. She developed a model for her um, health care students to reflect on their learning. So we used it and we changed it to it or adapted it to be in line with our own context. So we distributed or we designed a questionnaire online on, um, on uh, what's it, uh, Google Drive and asking them questions about all of these circles or aspects of critical reflection on their own learning. The first, I'm just going to briefly talk about their, um, the critical reflection that we were looking for. We first wanted to know in the inner circle um, the personal learning, personal experiences, the reason why they, for instance, decided to be part of this project, why they chose certain topics, etc. So that's um, about their own actions. And then the second circle refers to the interpersonal, learn uh, the interpersonal learning, what they learned from others. This is now us as lecturers and also their fellow students. In the third circle, we were interested what kind of concepts, um, theories, and methods that they've learned in the, their um, modules have influenced um, the draft of their um, uh, OER or the unit of the OER. And lastly, um, we changed the outer circle, which was different from Smith, um, to look at, um, and we used uh, Messy Rose transformative learning theory to look at their own gains, how um, this whole process has tra transformed their own learning and their future 
practices and learning. So we were interested in what they have learned, what they've found most valuable of this process, um, how they will be able to use it in their own context, if so, and then their future use. Will they be interested in developing OERs and in future, and how would they um, then plan to do it? So this is then um, the questionnaire, and Lebo is now going to just talk a little bit about what we found in our um, from the questionnaires or from this research. Lebo, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, in terms of the findings, as uh, I, let me start by sharing a little bit information about um, the participants the students who were involved in the development now becoming uh, participants. Uh, these uh, students have experience in higher education and they are, well, they, their experience ranges from two to say 15 years. And with regards to a uh, development of, of, of an OER, they indicated that um, it's actually, I think one of the, only one, actually one of them had uh, experience in OER development while the others only used them while they were studying uh, for their, uh, their master's program. So as Kesha has indicated, uh, based on the, on the Smith mo model, we, we, we had uh, these uh, imaging themes that talks to uh, the reflection, that is personal reflection, interpersonal reflection, contextual, and also a uh, critical reflection and uh, how, how actually it, it brought in the impact and what is it that we, uh, is a take home for us. So I'm going to share with you uh, the first uh, personal reflection. Uh, I mean, the first one that is personal reflection or self, uh, self reflection. So I'm not going to dwell more into the, 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 the findings, but what we can just highlight is that uh, with this, with this, uh, um, or the questions that came out of this uh, reflection, the personal reflection or the self-reflection is that they, they, they had to actually, as they were given a choice to, 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 to be part of this OER, that came out to me to actually decide what is it that they are going to share with us, what, no, what knowledge are they, the, the knowledge that they are going to share or, and be able to work closely with others and contribute to the field. So basically they had to make a decision and at the end they realized that with this, the reflection to, uh, they shared is that I was able to share my knowledge and uh, work closely with others. And if I were to actually uh, read a, 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 an extract that came about is that I wanted to, as one of them said, I wanted, I want to develop as a researcher and share the knowledge acquired in the ODL space and work closely with experienced mentors and colleagues. So this is basically what the, uh, what came out of a uh, one participant as a reflect as a self reflection that uh, actually. Uh, indicated that they had to also self-reflect and be able to, to, to know what is it that I want to do by being involved in this OER development. And in terms of the interpersonal reflection, uh, I remember one participant indicated that I read through other core developers work and gave suggestions to add more literature and also suggested subsections that could be included in the particular topic. So basically, they they are they are they, they were also indicating that this this gave them an opportunity to work with others and to be able to share their 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 their, their, their or give their suggestions, share more information, and perhaps suggest other uh, information that is related to this. So basically, there was some kind of interpersonal uh, uh, working relationship uh, as they worked together. So then the third one, uh, contextual reflection. Uh, in this, is, this is where they, they actually had to bring in their own context. As, I, as we said, they come from higher institutions, uh, different higher institutions, be it Tibet, uh, be it Tibet colleges, the universities and uh, other maybe private institutions. But because they have different contexts, uh, they, they, they had the responsibility also for, uh, they, they also realized that this can help me to actually adapt my uh, into uh, this OERs or do something about this OERs in my own context and or improve uh, 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 from their different contexts, if I can say that. So one participant also said, 
uh, some of the information I used for the content was practical information I learned while participating in strategic planning at my place of employment. So that basically uh, says to us, a context also mattered in this in this type of reflection that they had to reflect that okay with this uh, uh, the OER that I'm I'm, I'm busy uh, with the unit that I'm busy with uh, I have experience of uh, being part of a strategic planning where I work from but then how can I put, they they had to put this into context just to make sure that this is also talking to our African context and also uh, talking to what we what we have we are having as different contexts in in, in our own. Uh, different spaces, but also bearing in mind that this is uh, basically all about uh, ODF. Then the most, uh, what I would say for me, the most uh, interesting part was the fourth uh, uh, theme that talked to critical reflection. So with this one, the reflections were based on how and why, the why questions. So these were, dry, were driving individuals towards, or I would say they were driving the individuals towards uh, actions, prompting them to consider what alternatives can they bring for change and improvement based on their, their different uh, uh, insights, uh, inside collaborations and lessons that they have learned or, uh, uh, in this whole year and that they can also uh, be able to, to use uh, in the future. So one of them also uh, alluded to the fact that uh, they have actually developed some knowledge and skills that, that actually that they have gained. And uh, as one of them said, all students in my university, as it is a, a dual mode, but those in the distance education mode will be the greatest uh, will be the greatest beneficiary. So basically, it's all about it. It doesn't end with them. They share their knowledge, and that will actually be for the benefit of all. Uh, university students and well mostly i would say uh, distance education students then the other one just shared with us that uh, or shared in the, uh, responded by saying most uh, mostly my students and colleagues but anyone who would like to know more about odl theory and practice will benefit from 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 this oer so hence I spoke about bringing in change. If anyone feels that I need to change my 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 study material, be it at a Tibet college or wherever the, the institution, they at least know that we, uh, they have they have brought in some kind of change and improvement, and that also can can uh, take us forward to the to the fact that with that uh, the uh, this OER development or their reflections and the core development of this OER is basically saying to to us as lecturers as academics and as educators and it's it's only a matter of that it has to uh, it talks to the future practices that it benefits us to bring in more this kind of OTL practices and be able to 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 work with our students and not to know, especially that we know that our students are the students that can bring in their own knowledge so we shouldn't take them for granted and say that they are there just to learn and go away but can also a uh, a uh, uh, share their knowledge and that knowledge can be the benefit for both the lecturers students and also the higher institutions at large so this is what we we actually envisage that or we actually hoping that it will make some changes or it will bring some changes for the future practices of oer development especially when you co-develop with the students next slide so if we were to summarize what we shared with you today is that uh, we started with the oer uh, development or co-development with our students and as Kesha has indicated earlier that the whole idea, it was all about uh, bringing our own African context based on the fact that our students are, most of them, uh, they are from South Africa, but we also have Af uh, students from Africa. Therefore, that is why we wanted to, to bring this type of uh, OER that can talk to also our more like of uh, more of our context. So this is the figure that we, 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 we have actually, a. Uh, uh, designed ourselves and the first part talks to the process that we followed from the invitation 
of uh, when I mean the, the development process that we followed from the in invitation to students, as I indicated earlier, the information session on uh, the, the meetings that we had, the drafting part of the OER that we also had to engage ourselves in, and also the review process, the language editing, the completion and the submission that uh, we spoke about earlier. So with the with the with the with the um research uh, the research part of it this is how we we actually uh, uh undertook it we we it's all it was all about critical reflection and that uh, we we started by drafting the questionnaire as Shisha has indicated earlier uh, framed by the critical uh, reflection model and we we had to pilot uh, the study um we had one one person who, who was involved in the in the piloting and the distribution of the questionnaire to the, the, the six participants that were involved in the in the uh, OER development just to get their 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 reflection on all those uh, uh, types of critical reflections. Then uh, right up to the end, where we 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 used a deductive analysis based data analysis based on the the model that we used so that we that we, uh, we talked about the, the smith model whereby we followed all those for uh, all those uh, four reflections to uh, actually get our themes and uh, for our data and the data analysis was done was conducted was analyzed uh, deductively then also that actually brings us to how we actually developed the whole process uh, right up to the member checking. So this is basically the, simple, the, the, the process that we followed with regards to the two processes, the development part, and then the, 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 the empirical uh, study part. Um, so that is basically what we, we are trying to explain in this uh, summer. So that is all from our side, Kieshe. Thank you. Thank you, Lebu. Yes, then um, some concluding remarks. Um, we actually um, have drafted an article um, based on these reflections of our students and the draft is complete. Um, in the previous slide, maybe I can just go back quickly. That member checking there at the very end is where we are at the moment. So member checking um, involves in sending it back to the students, the draft article that we have got and ask them to check for us if this is a true reflection of the whole process and also um, their contribution or the responses in the questionnaires and also to do um, quality assurance. So they, the students didn't only become co-creators of the OER, they are actually at the moment co have become co-researchers. So in the article that we will hopefully publish in the new, near future, um, they will also be co-authors of, of the article. So they will do checking. It's at the moment um, we have actually seen it this week to our students and we have given them um, a little bit more than a week to look at the, this draft article and to come up with any suggestions for improvement. Um, yeah, and we have we are actually very fortunate. We have been invited um, to publish this or to submit this article to the Journal of Learning for Development, which is an international accredited journal um, of the Commonwealth of Learning. So we are looking forward to that process as well. And in conclusion, we really want to encourage all of you to who have got students to work with them and to use their assignments um, for OER development. Um, I know contexts are different, but students submit such wonderful work and it's a pity to just mark it and assess it and then it goes nowhere further. So to use it for them and it really empowered them um, for professional development. They became independent in the process. Um, there was a lot of student agency and they are actually very proud at the moment to be part of this OER and also then of the research process. So thank you again for this opportunity to share our experiences and research with you. Thank you so much, Miriam. No, thank you. Uh, I think it was a really interesting uh, presentation. So I personally really like that it's not just about the actual development of the of the uh, open educational resource, but also 
about the, the whole process of kind of getting their, the feeling of their experiences. So I see Tanya actually wrote a question which she then removed, but um, there's a new question by her. <laughs> um, what would you say was the top takeaway for you and for your students from participating in making OER? And what was the most difficult part? Uh, Want to respond? Yes. Um, okay. The takeaway for me is that um, I know these are postgraduate students, but the commitment that came with with uh, with them that they, they actually brought in the whole process, and for the fact that we 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 tend to like take them for take students for granted or just say that oh they have com they have completed their studies therefore there is no need for me to actually uh, engage them further but for me what remember these are the students who, who are these are the cohort of 2020 2021 and they they were like excited to bring in their own knowledge from different uh, contexts and that also for me confirmed that students are not passive but they all they always have something to share that can also be more of learning for us as as, as lecturers and at the end it was also more of uh, improving what uh, our content uh, uh, that we teach or the content knowledge that we, we actually offer to our students our students because they also brought their own uh, uh, suggestions and that also made more more uh, gave more quality to the oer and with regards to the students what is it what was the difficult part time management i would say they have their own uh, uh, other responsibilities and we also had to also consider that we cannot just uh, uh, impose things on them not taking into consideration their their their, their, their the, the time factor or their time management and other obligations that they have and if i if maybe we were allowed i know that there is one student who is here with us maybe she would also want to share her challenges but i don't know if he will be allowed to do, to do that. So that is what my take for now. I think, I don't know who, who it is. I, I, I saw the names quickly, but um, so I'm if you're that person, please do share <laughs> your experience. I'm putting Stephen uh, Mongwe on, on, uh, on the spot. Stephen, are you able to share anything with, 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 uh, with us? Okay, maybe he will he will come on board. I guess. You can just yeah, if you want, you can just unmute and uh, and and add what you'd like to add. Um, so maybe I I can just add um, with regard to benefits and takeaway. I think I've said it in the la la last slide as well. But um, the empowerment for the students and the, how they have grown in the process and became co-owners of this process um, was maybe, I think, um, the most rewarding part for for me personally, and I think for Lebo as well. And yeah, the, the opportunities there is for um, OER development and involving develop um, involving them in develop OER development. We actually, we looked very far and very hard to find research on, on co-development with students. Um, so unfortunately, um, there's not much written on this. There might be such instances, but we only could find two articles where students were involved in the co-development of OER or with lecturers. So this is something I think a field we can explore further. There's so much content there that we can share. And um, students, we there was a worry that students won't be won't be willing to share, and they were all so willing and so open to share. Um, Stephen, I'm going to op give over to you. I see you are unmuted. If you want to say some, something, thanks. Okay, no, I don't see. We don't hear you, Stephen. No. I don't know. Okay, I don't know what the problem is. If if you can get your audio working, please just uh, interrupt. Um, I, I actually had a, a kind of a follow up question on on Tanya's question. So I wrote this down relatively early in your presentation. So I was really wondering what the student thought, uh, students uh, thought about the project, and uh, you've investigated part part of that. Um, but that was only afterwards. And now you mentioned that students were actually quite enthusiastic to share. Um, 
information. Do you have any idea what students? So, so I would actually expect, but that might be in, in, a negative view, um, that students simply would not be so interested, right? So they um, um, students want to get their diploma, and um, now I don't want to sound too negative, but I mean, working hard on getting your diploma is already a lot of work. Um, so why would they be interested in in joining something like this? Um, so what, what what did they think beforehand? Um, I'm not sure if you have any any information on that because you measured it afterwards. Um, but what, what what were their expectations or what were their yeah their ideas? Yeah, I mean, no, it's it's difficult to answer the question because we didn't really ask them about this. But as Lebo has said, we um, and we invited them beforehand. We explained what we had in mind in an email and then invited them for a Teams meeting where we actually shared um, the knowledge. And at that stage, we didn't even speak about the research because that came um, as we were developing and thinking of you know writing up what we had. Um, so the, the research wasn't even there um, as part of, of the gain, of their gains. And when we involved them and we asked them, we always asked them before the time if they would be interested. Mm -hmm. So we asked all of them if they would be interested in um, in co-authoring um, co an article. And they were actually thinking that was um, an additional gain and they were all very positive to be involved in it. And you must keep in mind that these are um, academics, um, these mm -hmm. students, and they're working in higher education. So for yeah, them yeah. to publish and to have an, an, um, an OER on the table is actually also assisting them and empowering them and adding to their CV. So that might be different from, from undergraduate studies who, yeah. as you said, might not gain so much from it, but um, yeah, to, to actually give them the choice that this is not compulsory at all. And they will, and that's why we, we use students who were actually already um, have completed so that they didn't think they would be disadvantaged if they took yeah. um, part in this project. Right, right, right. Okay. Yes. Uh, um, Stephen, oh, sorry, go ahead, Label. Okay. Uh, in addition to what Rishi has just indicated, uh, the fact that students were were given a choice to 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 to, to I mean to be part of the OER development. And also they looked at the benefit for themselves. They most of them are aspiring to 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 move uh, up the ladder in terms of where maybe some are at the Tivet lecturers, I mean at the Tivet colleges and want to 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 actually uh, give a, a get exposure and experience on how to actually develop materials and that on its own will add on uh, on their CVs even though they are still busy with their studies. So for them, it was a matter of I'm going to gain experience and share my knowledge, and at the same time, this will benefit me at the end of the day. But the advantage also is that these are postgraduate students who are working at the higher institutions and for them it was more like an addition to what they are doing and that what will help them maybe add on their cvs and uh, be an advantage that i did this while i was studying and at the end of the day it was about personal growth and development yeah yeah no that definitely makes sense so it's a special kind of group of people of course who are kind yeah. of already more kind of internally motivated i uh, see steven has written um something in the chat um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that you can't get the audio working. Um, so thank you very much. Having been a member of the group of students who co-authored the document, I have to admit that my main takeaway is that because I was in the middle of writing my dissertation when we started this journey, the OER document gave me a chance to improve my academic writing. Now, that's actually an interesting um, aspect as well. It is, it is something really concrete, right, to work on, um, on something like this. Thanks, uh, Stephen. Um, I'm not sure if any anybody else has questions or challenges. I had a difficult time balancing schoolwork and the creation of the OER because I was registered for coursework. Was also working on my dissertation. Yeah, now I can imagine uh, <laughs> the time, um, kind of the, the handling of time or the time planning is, um, yeah, <laughs> can be challenging at times. Um, I'm not sure if anybody else has has questions. We still have a few more minutes. I was actually, I, I had two kind of 
related questions kind of look more looking forward or for, for others if because I saw there were a few kind of um, uh, comments saying motivated and thanks for an inspirational presentation if others want to want to do this so two kind of questions related to to this so what would you dif do differently if you would do something like this again now you have this, this experience and uh, kind of putting this out there as well so what suggestions do you have to others if they want to do uh, something like this um Differently, um, let me start by saying that I think it's it's important to have a kind of a personal relationship with the co-authors. This is always the case, I think, when you co-author any document or um, your OER, so that, that helped a lot. And um, for us as well, we had the same challenge. It is um, It was additional to our workload, so we also struggled with time management sometimes and and keeping up with what was required in the time that we actually set or the um, due dates we set. So maybe um, better planning, uh, proper planning is very important to set due dates from the beginning and to work closely with uh, with the students, I think is, is very important. And we didn't really always keep to our due date. So that might be something that I will um, look at when I have to do something like this um, again. I don't know about you, Lebo. Mm, I would talk, up, uh, talk about um, open communication. I think we, we, we were, uh, yes, we experienced challenges as we sent to, 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 to the students the invitation. I would say we, some, uh, we had one or two who were not able to. So because we had an open communication and we also had a, a room for any other challenges that might come across. So for us, it was a matter of that everything that we do, we openly communicate with, with the students and every now and then we keep on acknowledging that they, are, they, are, they also have other issues, but trying to remind them of a, 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 the, the, what we are ex actually expecting or what we are working on so that they can also uh, be reminded every now and then. So for me, open communication and continuous communication and having an open relationship with them that this is what you are going to do and this is how we're going to do. And they also, we made also made them uh, uh, contribute to the whole process. So eventually it became more important and that on its own made us to work towards a, a, the objective of having an end product. So the two for me, a, a, a relationship with the students really mattered most to us and this this is what actually helped us because they could communicate with us with the delays with the late submissions of their draft and so on they can easily contribute to what we were suggesting and that on its own uh, brought us together at the end this is how we, we we got to this like i said we had challenges that we we actually i remember we started this time this last year myself and Keisha had to meet and sit and draft all these invitations but then we were hoping that we will finish by the end of the year but we were just uh, over maybe ambitious i would say but we realized that we need to actually keep constantly working on it so time was also more like challenging but we had to soldier on thank you now oh, wonderful thank you i think that gives a, a very nice insight in this in this process. Uh, so I personally don't have any experience in developing something like this. So it's really nice to see how you set it up, what kind of challenges you had, but also that it can actually work um, and that you actually have a nice, I mean, that the, the product looked really, really nice. Um, so I'm, I'm very impressed. Um, I'm sure if anybody else has a final question, we're, we're getting to the, uh, to the end of the, the session. If not, then I would really like to thank you again, Geisha and Lebo. Um, so Tanya still says, congratulations on your final product. That hope more people will follow, indeed. Uh, no, but thank you um, again for this presentation as well. I really uh, enjoyed it. Uh, and I hope that a lot of people will, will start using your uh, open educational resource because that's ultimately the, <laughs> the goal, of course. Thank you very thank much. Thank you so much, Menu. Much appreciated. Thank you for this opportunity. Thanks.